Hello and welcome to a summary of all you need to know about The Bright Lights of Sarajevo, a poem by Tony Harrison. Now, I'll explain the meaning related to this poem as it appears in the Pearson International GCSE Anthology, and I'll highlight literary and language devices as well as contextual factors that you should be aware of when studying this text. So let's get started. Now, before I go into a reading of this poem and highlighting the literary techniques, it's really important to understand the context behind this poem. So, do you remember that this poem is a reference to the Siege of Sarajevo, which is the capital of today, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and this siege occurred between 1992 to 1996 in the Bosnian War. Now, do you remember that the Bosnian War, which happened during this time, actually has very many complex causes. However, the most significant was due to the leader at the time of Yugoslavia, which Bosnia was part of, and which included Bosnia and Herzegovina and the Balkan states. Now, this leader was called Slobodan Milosevic, and he deliberately stoked tensions and conflicts between Serbians, Croatians, and Muslim Bosniaks. These uh, groups will be mentioned within this poem. Now, Milosevic stoked tensions between them, and these were the three main ethnic groups in the region. And to bolster support for himself politically, Milosevic did use nationalistic ideas of a greater Serbia, which is a country made up only of Serbians, and this is what, of, of course, eventually escalated into war. So what I will do is read the first two verses or the first two stanzas and then highlight important techniques that you need to be aware of. After the hours that Sarajevans pass queuing with empty canisters of gas to get the refills they will home in prams or queuing for the precious meagre grams of bread they ration to each day and often dodging snipers on the way or struggling up sometimes 11 flights of stairs with water then you'd think that the knights of Sarajevo would be totally devoid of people walking streets, Serb shells destroyed but tonight in Sarajevo that's just not the case. The young go walking at a stroller's place, black shapes impossible to mark as Muslim, Serb or Croat in such dark. In unlit streets, you can't distinguish who calls bread chleb or chleb or calls it kru. All take the evening air with a stroller's stride, no torches to guide them, but they don't collide except as one of the flirtatious ploys when a girl's dark shape is fancied by a boy's. Now, of course, this opening two stanzas of the poem really highlight the tension, but also the normality that underlies this tension. So even if there's a lot of war that's happening, people in Sarajevo are still trying to continue to live their lives as usual. Now, in the first verse, the poet highlights queuing, empty, and queuing. And now the present continuous verbs queuing, which are repeated, shows just how repetitive life is under siege. Furthermore, uh, the notion that these Sarajevans pass is, and the rhyming caplet gas essentially emphasizes the predictability of life under Sarajevo and especially life in siege in Sarajevo. Furthermore, the pre-modifiers, precious meager grams, really show just how food is in short supply. This is a war economy, therefore food is really, really in short supply and it's rationed out to people. Furthermore, this is emphasised with the term rationed, and this shows, of course, that this is a war economy, and life is actually very difficult during this war. Moreover, the mention of snipers and shells. This is a semantic field of war, and it shows that life is really dangerous in Sarajevo. It's very difficult and unpredictable. Moreover, the present continuous verb, struggling, shows how arduous life is for Bosnians and Sarajevans in this war. It's interesting that the poet in line eight uses the second person pronoun you, and this relates to our assumptions. So presumably we are people who are not living under war. We don't understand how war is like or life in war is like. And so the poet or rather the speaker is directly speaking to our assumptions about this and also in some ways dispelling some of the ideas that we may have. Also, the sibilance, street serb shells, this shows just, it creates tension and it shows just how dangerous life is. But still, in spite of that, people are still walking and trying to create some semblance of normality. However, the conjunction, but, now this compounds the second person pronoun because it refutes the assumptions we might have about life in wartime. So it now builds up this the idea that actually, even if it's at war, the city is at war, actually life still goes on to some degree. 
Now in the second verse, the speaker mentions black shapes impossible to mark and the shadows emphasize how actually beneath all of the darkness, everyone is human and the darkness masks whether they are Muslim, Serb or Croat. Again, this is highlighting just how silly and how unnecessary war is, especially war, which is caused by ethnic strife. Moreover, the rule of three Muslim, Serb, Croat refers to the different ethnicities and how the war was predominantly ethnic. As I mentioned before, Slobodan Milosevic did really exploit the different ethnicities and really stoked tensions and this of course led to the war. Moreover, the reference to darkness, usually which represents a fear of evil, it usually represents something terrible. Actually, in this case, the irony is that it ushers in peace in Sarajevo. So it's actually in the light, in the daytime, where there's a lot of war, but actually when it becomes dark, there's peace and everybody goes back to some kind of normality. Moreover, in line 16, there's this reference to different dialects relating to how bread is called chleb, chleb or crew. And this reference to the different dialects shows the divisions in ethnicities. And of course, this shows that at root, one of the challenges of living in Sarajevo is this idea that people were caused to not feel like they could trust each other based on their ethnicities. Also, the alliteration towards line 19 and 20, flirtatious and fancied, emphasises some sexual innuendo. So in spite of the war, people are still trying to date. People are still trying to do regular things that we do in the West and take for granted. So let's carry on. Then the tender raider tone of the voice shows by signals she approves his choice. Then match or lighter to a cigarette to check in her eyes if he's made progress yet. And I see a pair who certainly progress beyond the tone of voice a match flare test and he's about, I think, to take her hand and lead her away from where they stand on two shell scars where in 92 Serb mortars massacred the bread shop queue of blood dunked crusts of shredded bread and lay on the pavement with the broken dead. And at their feet in holes made by the mortar that caused the massacre now full of water from the rain that's poured down half the day, the now even, the smallest clouds have cleared away, leaving the Sarajevo star-filled evening sky ideally bright and clear for the bomber's eye. In those two rainfall shell holes, the boy sees fragments of the splintered palades sprinkled on those death-deep, death-dark wells, splashed on the pavement by Serb mortar shells. Now, in these next two verses, firstly, the speaker refers to the tender tone and the alliteration here emphasises the blossoming romance between these two individuals. Furthermore, there's this spark of light that's highlighted, match and lighter. Again, this shows that there's some semblance of normality that's happening in the darkness. People are just smoking, they are hanging out and there's some kind of romance. Also, this romance between the two people that the speaker notices, uh, the boy who lights a cigarette, it's stated he checks if her eyes in her eyes if he's made progress yet. So this reference to romance shows that he's courting her, just like how young people in the West state. Now in line 25, the narrator interjects directly with the first person pronoun I. So this is the first time we hear directly from the narrator. And then the narrator says, I see, I see a pair who certainly progressed. Now, it's unclear if this is the same couple. Very likely it is, but it's still kept kind of unclear. Now, in line 27, to take her hand. Now, what this shows is it's a show of love and it's, of course, a contrast to the hatred of war. Moreover, in line 29, shell scars, the sibilance here highlights irony. It's interesting that the love of these two people could lead to new life. Of course, they could make a baby, which is new life, but they stand on remnants of death. And this death is emphasised furthermore with overt references now to the Bosnian war. And in line 30, the mortars massacred. Now, the alliteration here really emphasises the extreme violence of this war and the reference to mortars, the repetition of mortars, really emphasises the death, the destruction that this war has caused. Moreover, in line 31, blood dunked crusts of shredded bread. So this is a really gory, gory language play on words because it associates what we do when we eat bread. For example, if we eat bread and tea, we dunk the, t the bread inside the tea. However, in this case, the bread is dunked in blood. And of course, this is the blood of the people that were holding it who are now dead. Now, line 34, there's a temporal shift now to the present, to where the narrator is. And there's a mention of water, which is interesting because it's life-giving. It's a symbol of life. Moreover, there's 
in line 36, the superlative adjective mentioned smallest clouds. And this is interesting because it shows that these clouds, which caught, which have hovered in the sky, they are now clearing away and they're going to make easier for a bomber or somebody who's a sniper to actually see these people but also other people in the darkness of course this shows how this romance is still intermingled with death furthermore there's the sibilance sarajevo star which shows promise but there's this promise of romance of love blooming but it's in the under the specter of darkness and death Furthermore, there's the mention of the bright and clear for Bomber's eye, and this alliteration shows that the spectre of war is never too far, danger is ever present. Furthermore, in line 40, the Palades that are mentioned, this is actually a specific constellation of stars which reflect on the water. So there's this real interesting contrast between the beauty of nature and the beauty of romance versus the hor horrendous aspects of war and life at war. Furthermore, there's the ascendaton that's used, death deep, death dark, and the pre-modifier death to show how pervasive war still is. So let's look at the final verse. The dark boy shape leads the dark girl shape away to share one coffee in a candlelit cafe until the curfew, and he holds her hand behind aid flower sacks refilled with sand. This is a really poignant ending. There's some hope and promise of love, romance, some kind of normality in the night time. However, there's constantly the threat of death, violence and war. Now, here, the dark boy leads dark girl shape away. So there's this repetition of dark and shape, and it shows the promise of new love and romance. Moreover, the alliteration of coffee, candlelit cafe, creates some glimpse of normality. This is what we do when we are going on dates. We go and have a coffee in a cafe, maybe a dinner later on. So there's some kind of glimpses of normality that we would identify in the West, but this is happening in a very abnormal situation of war. Also in line 45, until the curfew. So these glimpses of normality are shattered. So alongside this normality, cafes, candlelit cafes, there are curfews and so there's a constant reminder of this war economy furthermore this reminder is compounded with these aid flower sacks and this is of course re reference to the un peacekeepers aid this is you know free food uh, donations made from the west and of course this is again relating to war so that's all. If you found this video useful, we do have a course covering all the IGCSE anthology texts, as well as model answers for past papers, so make sure you check out that course. But also, head over to our website, www.firstratetutors.com, for lots of English worksheets, English courses and materials to help you in this and other areas of English. Thank you so much for listening.